Welcome to the basic compression tutorial for HollowEdit 2020.4. This tutorial will guide new or returning users through the basics of compressing a volumetric clip for playback. At the end of this video, you will be familiar with the basics of editing in HollowEdit and be prepared to compress and export your own volumetric video data. This tutorial will demonstrate setting up a HollowEdit workspace, importing source data into HollowEdit, applying temporal compression using the Stabilize and SSDR stages in HollowEdit, and exporting the compressed volumetric clip in the OMS format. Great, let's get started. Let's begin by opening up HollowEdit 2020.4. When HollowEdit is opened for the first time, you'll be prompted to sign in and acquire a license. After acquiring a license, we're ready to begin. First, we'll create a workspace for use with this tutorial. Before going any further in HollowEdit, we'll open an Explorer window and create a new folder to use as a workspace. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll name it Basic Compression Workspace. Workspaces are directories on your computer where you can add source data you'd like to use in HollowEdit. HollowEdit will automatically detect any files added to the workspace. Important to keep in mind is that upon selecting a workspace in HollowEdit, HollowEdit will begin indexing all of the files and folders present in the assigned workspace. We recommend you always start with the new empty folder to avoid indexing unnecessary files. Next, let's tab back to HollowEdit. We'll press the Open Workspace button at the top left, then navigate to the file location of the new folder we created. Enter the folder location and press the Select Folder button to set this folder as your workspace. Finally, we'll copy our data into the newly initialized workspace folder. HollowEdit requires that each individual volumetric clip is grouped together into folders. So that's the way our sample data is laid out. We'll copy the Welcome to HollowEdit folder containing both the OBJs for mesh data and PNGs for texture data into the Basic Compression Workspace folder. Back in HollowEdit, if you look at the project window, you should see that HollowEdit starts indexing the files and folders added to the workspace. The project panel contains a nested view of the assets indexed in our workspace. Locate the Welcome to Volumetric folder containing our source files, using the disclosure triangles to expand the folders in our project panel. Next, we'll create a clip from our data. Press the Make Clip button to the right of the folder containing our data to open the Import Clip window. We've provided a clip with this tutorial of an actor speaking and gesturing to the viewer. The Import Clip window lets us preview our mesh and texture information and provides several important parameters. Depending on the contents of your files, you may need to configure some of the parameters while importing your clip. For our example data, we'll need to ensure that the reverse winding order parameter is enabled. For more information on the import settings, see the HollowEdit written documentation. After configuring your import settings, press the Import button at the bottom of the window to begin import. A progress bar will appear displaying the clip's import status. Now that our clip has been imported, we'll start a composition. In HollowEdit, your edits and arrangements of volumetric video are stored in compositions. Each composition groups together one or more clips into a scene, including any edits made in HollowEdit. To get started with our composition, we'll click and drag the Welcome to Volumetric clip into the composition window. This will add a track named after the Welcome to Volumetric clip. Compositions are made up of tracks and each track contains one piece of volumetric video being processed in HollowEdit. Our Welcome to Volumetric track contains a load asset stage, pre-configured with our clip. Stages represent individual actions performed in HollowEdit, and load or generate new data over frame ranges called intervals. Intervals are displayed on the right, in the track view as gray boxes displaying a frame range. This track only includes one interval on the load asset stage, but a stage can be split into multiple intervals as necessary, with each interval containing unique settings for that period of time. 
Creating a track by clicking and dragging from the project panel always automatically creates a load asset stage pre-configured with one interval for the duration of the clip. Before moving on, we should save our composition using the Save Composition option in the File menu. Compositions can be saved at any point from the File menu and loaded via double-clicking on the project panel or by using the Load Composition option in the File menu. Now that we've created a simple composition, let's review the clip in the Hollow Edit viewport. Using the controls at the bottom of the timeline, we can play back our clip. At the center, there are controls to play the animation forwards and backwards, along with controls to advance the timeline per frame, per interval, or to the start and end. We can enable looping playback by selecting the Enable Loop button. Many volumetric video clips feature a kind of temporal compression called stabilization, where each mesh within the clip is part of a series of meshes with shared topology, called a segment. In addition to compression, stabilization empowers many editing tools in Holosuite. In the next video, we'll cover adding stabilization with a stage in Holoedit. If your data already features stabilization, you can import or re-import the clip with the Detect Stabilized Sequences enabled and add it to the composition the same way we added our example clip. We can look at this example of a stabilized clip added to the composition with a load asset stage. It contains an interval with stabilized segments, indicated by the light gray brackets present on the interval. Each bracketed range represents a segment, a range of stabilized frames which share the same topology. Inside of each segment, there's a diamond marker. This marker designates a frame as the keyframe. When stabilization is applied inside of Holoedit, the keyframe is identical to the corresponding frame in the source clip before stabilization. This frame was deformed to create the other frames in the segment, which share the same topology. Because this clip was imported with existing stabilization, the first frame is labeled as the keyframe. In the next video, we'll take a look at adding stabilization using Holoedit. Further stabilization in Holoedit is optional when importing a stabilized clip. Thanks for watching.